Hello and welcome to Big Deal. Now, of course, many sectors are expecting some reforms, some SOPs and packages from the government. And same is the case for the beleaguered power sector. Now, to discuss exactly what is required to give an upliftment to the sector and also make it attractive enough for investors to come in and invest in this cash-hungry sector, we have two gentlemen joining us on Big Deal to discuss all the parameters and what can be really done. We have with us uh, the industry veteran, Tata Powers, Mr. Ramesh Subramanyam, and also the industry expert from KPMG, Santosh Kamath, joining us on Big Deal. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Yes. First, uh, the industry view. What are the stress points at the moment for the power sector? Mm -hmm. And uh, Tata Power has been in the business for so long. Is it one of the worst times that we are seeing currently? Yes, I think in terms of um, the outlook, uh, it's been one of the worst uh, we have seen. Um, but we always remain optimistic because we are in the business and uh, we will be in the business for some time to come. Uh, the stress points as I see it is uh, three or four. One is uh, what I call it is a currently a 2.6 lakh crore problem and that is the kind of debt that mm -hmm. the discoms have uh, accumulated. Now if you see the the breakdown of this uh, 2.6 lakh crores, 1.4 1, uh, 1 comes from the net worth erosion that has happened over a period of time and uh, the one point balance 1.2 lakh crore comes from the regulatory asset built up that has happened right. so as you know regulatory asset is nothing but tariff which has been in costs which have been incurred but not passed on to the consumer mm. so somebody is funding it today and it is the banks who are funding it right. so this is one big problem because this is putting the burden mm. uh, you know enormously on the discounts the second is the current about 25 paise shortfall in, in cost versus revenue right. is ongoing right. and I, I'm told last year uh, losses were about 25,000 crores uh, mm -hmm. all discounts put together. Now uh, the Uday one was supposed to bring it down right. much lesser, it's not happening. Right. So the immediate bleeding which is mm -hmm. this 25 paise gap is, is really the, it's like concurrent if you don't do anything today or tomorrow then this is going to hap keep on happening. Right. The third point is the 40 gigawatts or so of stressed assets which are there in the sector it has to be solved because they are your supply bottleneck and some of them are being paid fixed costs as well. Mm. So this is the third uh, stress point. Yeah. And the fourth is really the, the whole uh, institutional framework of the power sector itself, the, the so called concurrent subject mm. and how does how does one handle this for long-term success because right. it has not worked i think somewhere it's not working because the consumers are not getting the cheapest tariffs mm. the the discounts are bleeding investors are not happy mm. i think it's not a great story so somewhere something yeah. must be overhauled to get it right all right we need an overhaul and that's the clarion call coming in from the industry santosh you speak to many participants including the investors also and the bystanders uh, on what should be done. What is your view on the mm -hmm. expectations from the government on the package that should come in? Yeah, the first and foremost is how do you get the discom to discoms to turn around, right? Which is what Ramesh also mentioned. Uh, so we are hearing about an Uday 2.0, and uh, how is that structured? How do you get it get the discoms to turn around on that basis? Is one key expectation. Mm. The second expectation I would say is the stressed assets. How quickly can they resolve it? Mm. You know, because yeah. it's a huge burden on the banking system as well. The third is if you look at the government's focus today. Renewables is going to be a major thrust area for investment, yes. right? We need approximately 100 billion US dollars mm. uh, in the next five years if the government's, uh, you know, goal of renewables has to be met, okay? Mm. How will that money come, okay? Right. So we need certain mechanisms which mm. are, you know, able to attract that capital mm. and so some model which can bring that capital would be required. All right, so it's very important and all these, um, you know, measures have to be taken to get some funding also, which is so critical and you being the man of numbers, you'll agree with that. Now, you spoke primarily about the DISCOM issue, which has plagued the entire sector, the conventional as well as the renewable. How do you see the success of Uday 1 and what is expected of Uday 2? Okay. So, if you see the objective set 
in Udayavan, the objective was quite noble, that get the, get the past problems somehow parked by transferring the losses, uh, by converting into state debt. Right. And the second part was back it up by strong measures to reform the sector. Hmm. And I must say that one of the positive points coming out is, apart from the fact that the losses were transferred and therefore the discounts became lighter in terms of debt, uh, the positive points were there were also new indicators that were devised hmm. to figure out whether reforms are happening or not, hmm. okay, uh, in terms of monitoring. But the problem is that it re you can monitor things, but if things do not improve, and if you don't have measures to deal with that because mm. of the nature of the subject, which is state versus center, and mm. and how much a center can push right. the states, and how much states' machineries also are capable of moving things, right. I think that's where it probably failed. Right. Do you think? And here I would like to ask that in a um, sector which is so political, do you think it's difficult for private sector to really survive? We often ask this question to ourselves. Right. I think at the end of the day, it is uh, one must recognize that it is getting less and less political and becoming more and more uh, towards economic logic and, and commercial. That's a very good sign. Yeah. So Santosh, uh, you know what uh, he mentioned, the crux of the problem has been the state center issue, the regulatory yeah. framework. Yeah. Do you think that Uday too is looking at addressing this very crux of the problem? See, the center state issue is a, it it's because it's in the concurrent subject it's in the concurrent list right yes. so we can't address that with an Uday 2 mm. okay so mm. that will continue states at the end of the day states have to reform mm. right mm. and so behavior has to change mm. you know mm. uh, so that has to happen mm. but what Uday 2 is trying to do is trying mm. to link the central incentives and the central funding to performance yes uh, very very rigidly Yes. Right. So in that sense, it is. We hope it is going to lead to so better. It can wield its control. It can wield its control. Right. You're right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. this is performance-linked uh, uh, funding, is what you're talking about. Yes. Uh, do we have any idea on how it's going to really work? See, we don't have the details, but right. you know, the center does give a lot of funding to the states mm. in the form of things like IPDS, which is mm. for the urban mm. investments, or DDUGY, which is for the rural investments, right? right? Uh, now, these are grants right. given by the center. Yeah. You know, now if you link it to performance right. on the ground, right. then you know you're actually telling the states you perform, otherwise you won't get this money. Right. You know, so that is one way in which we think. Other uh, states might, you know, uh, might uh, tighten the belt. So, the high to. time performance linked of granting was really, you know, uh, put in place in various sectors in the country, I think. Hmm. But, yeah, you were adding to well, that. I was adding to what Santosh said. I, I think the, the key issue is you can put performance measures and, and let's understand where is the choke? Let's put call, yeah. call the word choke. Where is the financial choke today lying? Uh, what are the sources? So, as you rightly said, the uh, funding for development programs yes. clearly one. Yes. Grants for let's say mm. uh, improvements, etc. Mm. Then the next is the P, uh, PFC REC yes. uh, funding, uh, P, uh, P, uh, the public sector banks funding. Maybe these are levers in the state's levers. hands. Yeah. And of course, the appropriation of the budget deficits right. to the states. Okay, these are some of the measures. Right. And of course, the states also have the ability to issue bonds or support through state government guarantees, raise uh, yeah. loans, but that is actually coming down because RBI has put a strict uh, yeah. issue and uh, naturally banks do not want to get exposed right. to. Right. I am having a feeling that, you know, you, we have seen these chokes operating. Right. It hasn't yielded ground results, but I think the choke is tightening. Okay. 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 I, I think what is important now is to also uh, ask this next level of question that if the if these measures are able to put pressure on the discount management do the discount managements today have the capability to deliver those reforms given the current uh, setup they have and the wherewithal they have what inputs they need and what kind of structural uh, reinforcements from even technology uh, engineering project mm -hmm. management capability to be infused because some of these state discounts are not capable of doing it. Some some big states uh, have somehow uh, mm -hmm. developed some managers etc. But there has been never any career planning or 
progression hmm. uh, or, or management. These are expert jobs, right? right. Uh, I think managing a discom is not a general management job that anybody can move from any. So, talent job. management is also Absolutely. a very big issue there, Absolutely. and there therefore, the implementation of some of the good reforms have also yes. not taken place. <laughs>
probably uh, dealing with the reduction of the ATNC losses. Right. Now, why uh, this franchise system is uh, actually heavily loaded against, uh, let's say, large uh, players would be, right. whereas it requires huge bandwidth to run a franchise system, hmm. the returns are not commensurate in quantum. Hmm. So, uh, although it's a low capex hmm. uh, and reasonable profitability business probably, right. but uh, the quantum is so less because the entire existing asset still belongs to the state discom right. and you are only doing incremental capex. Yes. So, it, it does not attract it does you, not can, you can bring about only that much difference that to the overall so yes. system. Yes. Uh, so, are most players asking for this privatization? Can this happen? Yes, I think the general preference among private players is full-fledged privatization rather than franchising. Hmm. Now, can it happen? Hmm. Now, I would say that urban areas, towns, urban areas is where we could try that. You know, hmm. rural areas we have a problem, and the reason we have a problem is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of issue of unmetered supply, agriculture supply, you know, and unless you meter it, right. you know, you can't have privatization. But then the subsidy is linked to metering, you hmm. know, and since rural areas are subsidized, hmm. you know, we had a problem in Orissa privatization, right. precisely because there was a lot of unmetered supply, hmm. and there was a dispute between the regulator and the private sector on hmm. what's a true level of consumption, hmm. you know. So, I think uh, for urban areas and certain high loss areas, we should attempt privatization in my view. Um, uh, now, the other point which I think we should also remember, okay, yes. from a consumer perspective, yes. uh, today the quality of supply, yes. okay, and we do not talk about it much, we only talk about the financial losses, right. but you see the quality of supply, power supply in most parts of India is far from what is required, right. okay. Almost every building or household has a backup power. Yes, right, you have DG yes. or inverters, and s except let's say Mumbai, you know, or maybe Delhi or some places. Yes, you go to any Thank even you. any okay. other even capital cities of states, mm. you have backup power. Yeah. Now, our estimate, the different estimates, put the cost of that backup power mm. at something like five to six billion dollars a year. Right. Okay. In mm. terms of diesel, you know, or, or generator costs, you know. Yes. Right. No one talks about it. Hmm. You know, and that's a cost incurred by the system. Right. So I think the point is when we talk about privatization, uh, it's also about improving quality of supply. It's hmm. not just about turnaround, but also about improving quality of supply. Right. And I think our, our top cities, our, our towns, deserve better quality of supply. Hmm. And just one more uh, reason. See, privatization is pri one thing. Is there privatization is very difficult politically. That's hmm. what we observe. Yes. But the point is the. The quality of supply issue can be addressed a lot by using the right technology. Yes. What happens in the franchisee? You don't have the wherewithal to put obtain the entire structure hmm. of your choice. Yes. Okay. Uh, because you are not that mandate is not there. Right. Now, uh, when you have your own distribution, you can actually make a significant change. You can to put the in the capex, get the best technology, yes. and get investors as well. Do you think there is enough traction amongst investors for this kind of a business? If it were to happen, no, no. This business is is actually uh, loved as a concept. But right. at the end of the day, also the ticket size has to be commensurate. Right. And um, and and the fact that you are still really. Uh, you are actually a, an attachment to the RISCOM in, right. in many ways. Yeah? You, are, you, are, you are the front end and the commercial end of the RISCOM. Hmm. That becomes a little problem, but, it, but I think investors like it because remember the customer hmm. is ultimately the front end is, is something which you have right. and that front end when, when technology changes or other changes come in, you are actually the first to have that hmm. uh, customer base with you. So, right. it is a good business to have, but right now it is not the most profitable, yeah. but in the current circumstances probably short of privatization is the only option left. Alright, but uh, it all boils down to attracting money to yes. fund the sector. Yes. As a man of numbers, how do you see that particular bit? And in your own space, you are looking at non-core asset sale to reduce the debt. How is the industry looking from the debt perspective? And of course, the lenders have no appetite to lend to the sector at this point. Well, that's, uh, that's true. Um, I think most of the uh, power sector is over leveraged. Um, this is one of our concerns. That's why uh, we as Startup Power, we are now focusing on getting our balance sheet right. Hmm. Okay, that clearly is our imperative because this over leverage situation is dangerous. Hmm. And as it is, as you rightly said, the, the banks are uh, not wanting to come into power sector. Yes. Um, Some time back, uh, there was uh, renewables was the flavor of the season. 
now due to the way renewables are also panned out hmm. we see the lenders now backing out of even many renewable projects because yes. they feel that margins are compressed hmm. i think the lesson is very simple a, a viable sector can come from only viable uh, actors in that sector and viable actors can come in only when they have margin to play with and service debt and yes. their investors yes. and you can do it once twice thrice four times uh, that you can live with a low margin etc etc but in the long run ultimately it all catches up so invit is a good option for fundraising i think invit is structurally a very good concept why it is a good concept because the biggest reason why uh, biggest attraction of a sector like power is you have long term contracts which gives you steady flow right yield investors love it yes now however they they don't want to take construction risk they don't they want credible operators to back them so that they just come in as financial investors and take their returns regularly mm. so the three thing they are concerned with is no uh, uh, construction risk no no operational risk mm. and and third is good governance right okay because they are not going to be spending time in uh, to run the companies mm. so for many companies therefore they can transfer their assets and therefore monetize and not stuck with large amount of debt so it's a right. great win win right today of course there are some constraints right. for example rightly so there are lower levels of debt you can t uh, take in an yes. invite and yes. i think it's it's for a good reason yes. and i think that that discipline could help right yes for sometimes uh, for us uh, you know this choice is 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 not a very big uh, i would say attraction Uh, because we are otherwise good in governance etc so we would like to have a little more leverage and manage ourselves all right and very quickly how big is uh, the electric vehicle opportunity at this point it's very early stages because penetration is uh, moving slowly hmm. uh, remember that uh, as a power consumption it's not a very big consumption by the way it's all not right. a needle mover all right all right not a, a not a needle business. not a needle mover yeah. but uh, gentlemen uh, from whatever you spoke it's uh, very very clear that this con trouble and their losses have to be reduced and the government needs to come out with some substantial measures for that and only then the sector is going to attract funding which is the need of the hour with that it's a wrap on uh, big deal i thank both the experts for joining us and all the viewers for tuning in to big deal